Okay. Um, we want to welcome uh, the family and friends and the folks here that are celebrating a really precious life and in our 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 expectation today is that um, the Holy Spirit will really comfort us and and encourage us and maybe someone here who may not be a believer in Christ I know that Laurel uh, was always like sharing her faith and loving people and maybe today would be a good day if you are not a believer that you would you think about it and uh, and make a decision in your heart to believe in Christ because this woman was really an awesome woman and would want that um, in first Thessalonians 4 just this one verse it says brethren I would not have you to be ignorant concerning them which are asleep uh, sometimes in the scripture, uh, people that have died are referred to as people that are sleeping uh, because their body is there, though they are gone. And in, in um, the scripture we read in Psalm 90, verse 10, I fly away. Also, the end of James chapter 2, as faith without works is dead, so the body without the spirit is dead. So Laurel has been battling cancer for years and yet always knew and had this assurance that her life was more than her body, but Christ, the relationship with God given to us by his grace is the guarantee that we will not uh, that when we die, we leave. We leave our body and go to be with the Lord. So Paul said, I don't want you to be ignorant of this. I want you to be informed. And he said, therefore, you, you, that, that, he said, concerning them which are asleep, that you sorrow not, even as others which have no hope. So our sorrow is not the same as other people's sorrow who don't have any hope. But our sorrow is sorrow, but it's a bit different because we have hope. We will see her again. Um, she has gone to her reward. Um, we'll hear today things from family and, and, and just be encouraged in that reality that we are a short time actually from being together with her and others that we love very much and know. So let's uh, have a prayer. <clears throat> Lord, we thank you for this amazing woman's life, for her faith in you, genuineness, her freedom, creativity, songwriting, her love for people, her good words. We remember her humility, esteeming other people to be important, honoring people in her heart. Thank you, Lord, for her life and minister to us here in Jesus' name. Amen. Good afternoon. It's uh, just an honor to stand before you today. Love to the family, the friends, body members, many that are watching online today, all over the world, I understand. And um, when, uh, when Bruce asked me to share today for the service, I was um, shocked in a good way, but also very honored. 
And just thinking about Laurel, as many of us have many memories of her, but I was thinking uh, back many moons ago, I remember visiting my brother in Lenox, Massachusetts. I had to be 16 years old. And I remember when I saw Laurel singing on the stage in Lenox, and I was a little guy, and thinking, wow, that fiery red hair and that passionate uh, love for God and her beautiful music. Wasn't her music amazing? And we, we heard a little bit of it today, and we're going to see some videos today of, of her and hear more. And, but I remember just seeing her, and I was like, who is this woman? You know, she had such an amazing spirit of Christ. And uh, just seeing her through the years as I eventually moved to, uh, to Baltimore and, and, and got to know her well and, and Bruce and the family. And so today when I was just thinking of her memory, I, I, th I thought of a few verses. And just a, our prayer today is, again, that you're comforted in this, that absent from the body, she's absent from us, but present with the Lord. That's why a face-to-face -face service is really a picture and a, uh, a perspective of today she's alive with Jesus Christ. And of course, we miss her and our love and care goes to the family and friends. But I, I thought of this verse today in and, and, um, 2 Corinthians chapter 2, verse 14, and this word fragrance came to my mind. And have you ever been in a room where there's a lot of, where, where someone has too much aftershave? Have you ever been in that kind of situation? <laughs> where someone has way too much perfume? And it can be overwhelming. But in a good sense, in a spiritual sense, I think as believers, our life with Christ is very similar to that. It's a fragrance, and it's beautiful. It actually uh, is refreshing. It's something that is... Um, enjoyable. And I just think of Laurel and thinking of her life, her, her tremendous journey with God, and specifically the last eight or so years with cancer, and just her valiant fight, and the many, the many that served and loved and cared. And so she finished strong. She finished. She ran across the finish line, and she heard those beautiful words that we all desire to hear. Thou, you know, enter into thy joy of the Lord, thou good and faithful servant. But I love this verse. Paul mentions this in verse 14. Now, thanks be to God who always leads us in triumph. And wasn't that Laurel? She was always pointing us to Christ, right? Isn't that the Graham family? They're always pointing us to Christ. And this is what's really struck me as I was just meditating. And through us diffuses the fragrance of his knowledge in every place diffuses. I was thinking about what happens when you spray perfume or you break the alabaster box as we see in the Gospels. There, all of a sudden it becomes this very pronounced fragrance that was different prior to what was there before. And Paul goes on to say, for we are to God the fragrance of Christ among those who are saved and among those who are perishing. To the one we are the aroma of death leading to death and to the other, the aroma of life leading to life. Who is sufficient for these things? And just by way of analogy, we could say that maybe you worked with her, maybe you served with her, maybe you know, we all enjoyed her beautiful ministry of music and care. I remember just over the years, we would have people visit. We'd give um, just care bags to her, and just she was always so positive. You'd never know that she had pain. She'd never, you'd never know that she was having a bad day. And that aroma of life, that aroma of love, that passion that really <clears throat> strikes me personally and you, I'm sure, that she really diffused the knowledge of who God was and is and always will be. So when we think about death today, I love what Paul said in 1 Corinthians 15, verse 24, that death is swallowed in victory. Isn't that good? It's another good analogy, isn't it? Death is not the end. It is swallowed in this victorious place where Christ conquered death. That's why today we grieve, we mourn, we're sad, absolutely. We miss our loved ones. 
but that's not the period at the end of the sentence. Death is swallowed in victory, and her life lives on in us, through us, and remembering her in a beautiful way today. And we can say that we are always led in triumph. We're always led to a place that is greater than ourself. We're always led to a place that points us to something bigger than ourself. And that's what Laurel did for me. She sang and the, the, the beautiful song, it is a song about being blessed. Remember this? We're going to hear it today. She, again, just had so much of a love for the body and so, so humble and just a beautiful friend. So in just talking with Bruce and um, just love and respect him and the family and just thinking that um, cancer, there's the first three letters in that word cancer is can, what God can do in cancer. And we had a, a little talk about that and, and just thinking about what God can do and what God did and what God will do. And to think today in a, just a spirit of hope, a spirit of hope that her fragrance it permeates, it penetrates, it lingers in our hearts, and it, and it points us back to a beautiful Christ, a beautiful heaven, and a beautiful life. Amen? Let's pray. Father, thank you today. We praise you, and thank you, Lord. Comfort each one in the room. Thank you for the reality of heaven. It's no longer a subject or a theological word. It is a place. It's an address. It's a everlasting peace. It's a place that we will one day be if we have our faith in Jesus Christ. And that's my prayer to you today. If you do not know Jesus, put your faith in him today. That's what Laurel would want. That's what the family would want. That it is not a religious exercise, but it is saying yes to Jesus Christ and saying, Lord, be my Savior, and he will come and be the purpose and strength and meaning in your life. So, Lord, thank you today, and we bless your name. In Jesus' name, amen. Right now, let's look to the screens, please. We have um, Laurel's nieces from New Zealand, so please look to the screen. Hey, everybody. Thank you for including us in... Laurel celebration today. Uh, my name's Jennifer, I'm Laurel's sister, and my husband Jim, and this is Sage Wickline, her niece, and her other niece, Kate Wickline. Um, Laurel was known to you all as Laurel, but to us she's known as uh, Auntie Lala, right? How do you spell it, Kate? L-A-L-A. -A -L -A. Yeah, that's Auntie Lala. And uh, Laurel today would be having the last laugh because I'm not so good with technology. Um, she was forever trying to get us to do Facebook or iPhones or messaging. And uh, here we are today being with you because of technology. So you uh, have succeeded, Auntie Lala. Uh, we were home at Christmas. It was a very special time uh, for our family. Laurel's living room was beautiful. She had the tree all decked out with her um, decorations, um, ornaments of a lifetime of collection. She had lights that were just perfectly lit, the fireplace. Um, she always had a fire. And it was a real cocoon of comfort for her. We were all together. It was magic. It really was. And we didn't just hang out at the house, did we, ladies? We, um, Laura was, she wasn't feeling like a box of birds, um, but she still wanted to get out and about. So we did a few different things. Seiji, what did we do? We went to Starbucks and got some cold and hot drinks. One time when we were there, we got her some coffee mugs. Yeah, what else, Kate? What did we do? We went to the Mexican restaurant, and we stayed in our for a beginning. Bruce was here to catch on fire by him eating as much hot sauce as he can. That's right. The girls um, like to see how much hot sauce... Bruce, he would take the bottles and pour a bottle on, and they, they figured if he ate enough, his hair would actually catch on fire. And um, this was something that we, we did use summer after summer when we visited. Um, I, I don't think his hair is caught on fire yet, but he's giving it an honest effort. Uh, Laurel's journey was remarkable, and today I think about all of her friends, 
her friends far, near and far and, and far and wide. Um, when I was a kid, when Pachka and I, I think, were still in diapers, there were a couple names, Princess and Dolly, that we first heard. These were friends of Laurel's, and to this day, as I'm pushing 50 years of age, these are still household names for us. Um, some friends joined the journey much later. I think about Sheila, the hospice nurse and friend who just came on board, um, probably, you know, about, well, in December. And all the friends in between, you know, friends that she's knew in Maryland and, and Maine and Massachusetts, friends um, on the other coast, um, other parts of the country, out of the country. She made friends at the National Institute of Health, um, at Mercy Hospital. She took us all on this, uh, on this journey with her. And these friends um, want you to know how much your, your friendship gave her comfort and it sustained her. It, re it really did. Laurel, she was, uh, she, was, she was courageous. And she was full of grace, always. And her creativity, one of her God's gifts to her, she had until the very end. She would be in her art room, her beautiful little art room that her good friend Janet had uh, fixed up so she could spend time out there. And she was working on projects. She had a little picture going. Or she had a wooden sculpture of a whale that she was working on. And this was really up until the last few weeks of her life. Her creativity never left her. Also, this other pursuit she enjoyed was the, um, the music therapy that she did with um, Elena and some ladies that would come by the house and they would sing and play guitar. And it was, uh, it was a special thing for her. She really enjoyed it and looked forward to it. And she, they actually let Bruce join in sometimes if, if Bruce was well behaved. He got to come along for the hoot nanny. So these are things that were with her um, right up to the last few weeks of her life. She had a real gratitude for life. And, and I think the gratitude, the courage, the grace, the creativity, and her faith, these are things that we will always remember about Laurel. This is her legacy. She was and um, she will always remain beautiful in the face of what was really a really unforgiving illness. So we love you Laurel. We love you Bruce, Marita, Kevin, little Bruce. Thank you. Kate Wickline, did you guys, I think the girls have something they'd like to to do now to be part of the celebration. Sage, you have a poem I think that you're gonna read, right, that you wrote for Auntie Lola. Go ahead, you're up. When we go to Lola's, my heart is filled with love, just like heaven above. When we swim in the swimming pool, I wonder if there's treasure buried down there, just as valuable as Lola. She is our ray of sunshine, as bright as a bumblebee. Now she has found her wings and will be up in heaven as happy as can be. But she is still our ray of sunshine. She is still more valuable than treasure, for she will always remain in our hearts forever and ever and ever. Amen. Hey everybody, thank you for including us.
Okay. At this point, we're going to have some testimonies from the family. And uh, we'll start with Marita. Would you like to do that? That was precious, wasn't it? That was really darling there. Hello. <laughs> I wasn't going to come up by myself, so my brothers are here with me. <laughs> so the word stepmom is such a horrible word to describe Laurel because it doesn't even begin to touch upon who she was in my life. Confidant, hero, guidance, love, warmth, family, strength, patience, beauty, caring, funny, and true friend are words that come better to mind when describing who she was to not only myself, but to everyone who was lucky enough to know her. She molded me, supported me, and believed in me when others wouldn't have. She was a huge part in making me the woman that I am today. But that's just the kind of woman she was. She loved others and knew how to make others feel apart and welcome. She loved you and accepted you at every stage of your life, even in moments when others may think you're a work in progress or even a loser. She always gave you her award-winning smile and made you feel like a winner. Laurel was a special person that you only got once in a lifetime, and all of us that got to have her in our lives had a really precious gift, a gift that I know I don't take lightly. All her songs, stories, countless laughs, lectures, those were probably just for me, <laughs> and every amazing memory will forever resound in my heart. All I can say is heaven just got a lot more fun since she has joined them, am I right? <laughs> and even though I'm jealous that Jesus has all the time with her now, I won't say goodbye, but instead I'll say, I'll see you later. So, I don't think there's anything I can say that will give justice to the amazing person that Laurel was. She never lost her giving and caring nature that so many of us have been so fortunate to know. She never became bitter and asked, why me, as so many would have. And so many times she was there for me, whether it was thoughtful advice or just a shoulder to cry on. And you knew she would never ask for or want anything in return for all her acts of kindness that were felt by so many of us privileged enough to know her. She continued to inspire and touch the hearts of everyone around her, including myself, and I'm sure many in this room, all the way until she took her last breath. Well, she's at home now. I think it's about all I have to say. <laughs> yeah, so uh, I'm going to be reading this for my father. Laurel Elderdick and Graham, what a girl. It's very lucky to have been married to Laurel. This is my father speaking, by the way. <laughs> and to share her life for so long. She was my goddess, my sweetheart, my darling. She'll be greatly missed. Got to hug and kiss Laurel a million times. Tell her I love her a million times. For that, I'm so grateful. Thanks. <laughs> Thank you to the friends and family that gave so much to her, their time to help out. Thank you for all the millions of prayers. Thanks to the Seasons Hospice and all their folks. They're so wonderful. Enjoy some more of Laurel's great songs during this picture presentation. Thank you. Okay, just before the, the um, picture presentation, just want to bring just to uh, our attention this bulletin. This is amazing. By the Minuteman Press, she worked for them and maybe some of the Friends and family, or friends and workers are, are here from them, but just be sure to grab this on the way out. It has a beautiful uh, 
synopsis of her life and some testimonies on the back. So we can play the, uh, the slideshow now. Just keep giving For even if I'm poor You see I'm as rich as I can be With God's word inside of me I feel like singing And even when the storms of life They shake me Breaking because there's more I could. 
much as this dust can And I can't even walk this road If you don't take my hand And though I've never seen your face I know you on my knees And with my whole heart and soul Desire to love you more than these Feed my sheep Remember 
you join me in prayer as we close? Father, we thank you for Laurel, her life, her joy, her freedom, her talent, the influence that she had on so many of us over the years. Lord, thank you that she's safely home with you after such a long battle with cancer. But thank you, Lord, she is the winner, for she lives forevermore. Thank you, Lord, the next time she is with her body, it will be brand new and forever new, painless and perfect. Oh, Lord, thank you. Lord, we pray for Bruce and Bruce Jr. and Kevin and Marita. We pray, Lord, that as they have for sure already experienced, when those pangs of grief show up, that you are there, a present help in time of trouble and a time of need. Thank you that you are the great comforter and that you send your spirit to be right there next to us, to help us absorb the pain and yet rejoice at the same time because you are real, your promises are true. Thank you for your faithfulness. Lord, we pray that your peace would fill their hearts and that you would heal them as time passes, as they, no doubt, laugh more than cry in remembrance of Laurel. We thank you for her, how our lives have been enriched, whether we knew her personally or just were blessed to be recipients of her ministry of music and joy and freedom. Thank you for blessing us with people like Laurel. We pray for anyone who's here who may be at this moment can't say that if they pass today or whenever that they would be with Christ in heaven. Today is a day of opportunity because Christ died for our sins. And if we will acknowledge that before him and turn to him and say, Jesus, I believe in you. You died for my sins too. I need you to take them away. I need you to save me. If you ask him that, he will hear you. He will answer. He will change your life. He will give you something to sing about. So the invitation is open. We pray you would ask him today to be your savior. Father, we commit this precious family to you and everyone that's here into your special care for us. Lord, like Laurel sang about, you wanted your sheep fed, tended, cared for, strengthened, protected, fortified. We pray that each one would go out that way today, continuing to fellowship with you. We thank you in Christ's name. Amen. Okay, if you could uh, allow the family to go out first and go to the back, and then uh, the receiving line will be back there. So we, thank you. Amen.
just keep giving For even if I'm poor, you see I'm as rich as I can be With God's word inside of me I feel like singing And even when the storms of life They shake me the darkness cannot hide and you save each tear I cry and you don't forsake me because there's love